Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Hope you are well. So today in this video, we are going to learn about a poem uh, by H.T. Coleridge, that means Samuel Taylor Coleridge and the title of the poem is uh, Dejection and Ode. Okay, so uh, this poem was written in the year 1802 um, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge and um, from the title we can uh, easily understand that this poem is about uh, some dejection, some despair of the poet and this dejection is because of uh, the poetic block that means the poet is not able to write any poem. Uh, there may be certain reasons behind that but uh, one of the most important reason behind this is his lack of uh, actually we can say inspiration from the nature uh, that actually leads uh, him or used to uh, inspire him once to write poetry but uh, nowadays that means in uh, 1800s the poet was not feeling very much inspired by nature and that is why he is feeling very much dejected and that's why uh, uh, this poem comes as a result okay right. other poems too on these theme like uh, youth and age, work without hope, dejection and ode. But uh, most important of these uh, poems that means on the uh, theme of dejection, this is the best poem. Okay, That means dejection and ode is the best poem of these three. In uh, several other videos or uh, in some books you might have read that this poem was actually addressed to um, Sarah Hutchinson but uh, this is obviously true. No, true. But uh, I must include that this poem was actually uh, addressed to William Wordsworth and this poem must be read along with another uh, Wordsworthian poet, um, poem that is uh, uh, Immortality Ode. Okay. So why I am saying this? No, because uh, in stanza 4 you can find an instance where uh, Coleridge is actually uh, alluding to William Wordsworth's idea of uh, attributing life, attributing personality upon the nature that is uh, termed as pathetic fallacy. Okay, you have heard uh, of pathetic fallacy I think. So this was actually uh, the Wordsworthian idea and Coleridge is attacking this in stanza 4. But after some personal quarrel uh, between Coleridge and Wordsworth, the reference to Wordsworth was taken out and Sarah was substituted um, in uh, the place of William Wordsworth. So this was the um, background history uh, behind this poem. Now um, uh, why I am saying that this poem must be read with um, uh, the another poem with the Wordsworthian poet, poem of Immortality Ode because this poem, these two poems have much in common and at the same time there are very much differences too. Uh, so the co common point of view of these two poems is the dejection beca because both of these poets are feeling dejected, feeling despaired because nature is not being able to um, uh, inspire them to write poetry. Okay, so this is the um, um, uh, introduction to this poem. And so now let's move to the analysis of this poem. Late, late yesterday, I saw the new moon with the old moon in her arms. And I fear, I fear my master dear, we shall have a deadly storm. So this line is uh, from the ballad of Sir Patrick Spence. Okay. So, who is Sir Patrick Spence? No, Patrick Spence is a prophet, we can say, a very famous prophet who uh, made a prophecy that if ever uh, there is the old moon in the hands of the new moon, that means there might be some stormy weather. Okay, so now let's move to the main poem. Well, if the bard was weather wise, who made the grand old ballad of Sir Patrick Spence. That means, well, if the bard, that means the poet, if he is uh, weather wise, that means if he is very much a uh, knowledgeable person uh, regarding weather, who made the grand old ballad. Uh, no, this ballad that is actually alluded by Coleridge here is a very much old ballad. Okay. In this Scottish ballad, we can see there is a Scottish uh, sailor who was uh, actually made his journey at night towards some Norwegian countries and while visiting or while journeying through the uh, sea, a ship was drowned in the sea. Actually, uh, on the very onset of his uh, journey, on the um, beginning of his journey, he had seen the same phenomena, same natural phenomena of old moon in the hands of new moon. Uh, actually, from that time, this is uh, in belief that 
if this phenomena ever exists that means this will bring some inauspicious storms that will obviously uh, made a turmoil everywhere okay so uh, this is the allusion here of sir patrick spence so the poet is saying that if this is true this night that means on the very night uh, on which uh, actually coleridge was writing this poem so tranquil now this is very much calm now will not go hence but it will not be the same unroused by winds uh, so this uh, time this time of night this is very much unroused the winds are not blowing very fast that ply a busier tread than those which mold yon cloud in lazy flakes that is actually shaping the clouds in the yon in the distant sky or the dull sobbing draught that moans and wrecks upon the string of the eolian lute so in these lines the poet is uh, actually uh, saying that the calm breeze the uh, light air is actually making a, a little sound in the eolian lute eolian lute is lute is a, a harp like instrument a stringed instru instrument uh, which produce uh, some um, uh, melancholic sounds okay so eolian is related to aeolus the god of wind okay uh, so in these lines the poet is saying that the light breeze is uh, making moaning and melancholic sounds okay so in the next lines which better far were mute but the poet is wishing that that must be stopped that means the poet is not wishing uh, the air to be blown uh, the air to uh, actually play the harp or the sitar like instrument actually he is very much feeling dejected and that is why he is not liking the music anymore the music of the air because he is very much uh, paining from inside okay uh, and when we are uh, in pain we don't like anything uh, from the outside okay that is why the poet is saying this in the next lines follow the new moon winter bright that look the new moon is shining in the bright winter night okay and overspread uh, that means completely covered with the phantom light actually uh, there are flakes of uh, clouds uh, in the night and that is why the uh, light of the moon of the new moon is uh, uh, co co covered is uh, actually making these phenomena like or we can say this ghostly appearance okay with swimming phantom light overspread but rimmed and circled by a silver thread that means the moon is encircled by a bright thread of light okay uh, this light is the very light from the moon and that is why this is called the silvery light okay so in the next lines i see the old moon in her lap foretelling the coming on of rain and squally blast so the poet can see the old moon in the lap of the new moon and uh, as i have already mentioned uh, as per the superstition that there might be a uh, huge rain or we can say the squally blast or the uh, or the tempestuous rain we can say and oh that even now the gust were swelling and even now in uh, in this uh, time of evening or in this time of night the gust or the wind is uh, completely swelling it is uh, getting huge and huge uh, it is uh, actually getting its speed so in the next lines and the slant night shower driving loud and fast that means the night shower the shower in the night is increasing its intensity that means it is gathering more power okay in the next lines those sounds which oft have raised me so the poet is saying the sounds of this rain or we can say the sounds of this nature uh, that often have raised me or uh, of, often have elevated me to write poetry whilst they odd actually uh, there was a time when these natural phenomena or natural things have uh, inspired me very much to write something new to create something new and sent my soul abroad that means sent my imagination abroad or in long distance that the imagination could be much more fruitful much more fertile and uh, that could produce a much more important uh, writings okay 
so in the next lines might now perhaps their wanted impulse give so the poet is wishing that this storm can uh, again give him the impetus give him the impulse to write the new poems might startle this dull pain so the poet is wishing this wind uh, to startle him to completely overwhelm him his pain so that he can make he can write something new some new poetry and make it move and live actually the poet is wanting this wind wanting this um, uh, storm to stir up his sense of frustration and failure and to intensify that and as a result what will happen no this will move him and this will move his soul and uh, as a result that will obviously help him to write new poems so this is the first stanza hope this will be of help if this helps you then please give it a like do share with your friends the other stanzas of this poem will be covered in the next videos soon so keep watching thank you for watching this video